Let's go back to Dexter. Awesome. Give yourself a tip. There's a difference between os, os, and as. All right. Nine. Haley. Give yourself a tick. And finally, Prudence. Did anyone get anything different? She said amp, A-M-P. Yes, Kibble. Okay, give yourself a tick. All right, let's read these words together, boys and girls. First word. Oft. Two. Ost. Three. Est. Four. F. Five. It. Six. Ist. Seven. Is. Eight. Os. Nine. S. Ten. N. Who got all ten correct? Give yourselves five ticks. That's good. Who got nine correct? Okay, give yourselves four ticks. Who got eight? It seems like we have to work on this. Okay. Hmm? Yeah, change the E to an A. A and A. There's difficulty there. I think we'll keep working on this. Take out your homework, please. Sherry, do you want to erase the board, please? Let's take care of this. Boys and girls, what exactly, we started off classifying rubbish, right? Then we started classifying home home people. For homework, what were we classifying? Animals, but special kinds of animals. Aaron. Alright, so we were classifying mammals. And what we did was, we took the texts, then we drew the tables. And then we put the information in the tables for homework back in those texts. So we're just going to read them now. Derek, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. We'll start off with you then. I'm going to read the first paragraph, then we get going. Right, we read this last time. Now we're just including the animals' names. If there is a problem, just stop us and we can talk about it. Mammals are animals with body hair, have three middle ear bones and nourish their young with milk that females produce. There are about 5,000 species of living mammals. They are divided into three subclasses. Monotremes, marsupials, and placental mammals. Derek. Good. After the babies hatch, yep. the mothers nourish Good. their young with milk. Example of one just one. <coughs> examples of monotremes yeah. are beanie and skin spots, shiny and skin spots, flat, 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 flatted.
Uh, voice, please. Koala and the kangaroo. Yes? Okay. Yeah, is that it? Okay. Finally, Bella, give me pla. Any kind of text. 
what is the purpose of an introduction? I mean, if you're talking about mammals, then you can talk about the lives of these mammals. That's a good idea. But what about any kind of text, like these textiles that we're talking about? Well, what I wanted you guys to do was to come up with this on your own, but thankfully we have model answers right here. So, um, on page two, in that box, that first rectangle that you see, we're talking about the first paragraph of the introduction, right? You can read this. And then the final paragraph, the conclusion, well, obviously you're summarizing what you've just been talking about. So, we're going to read an introductory paragraph about textiles. We're also going to read a summary about what was just spoken about textiles. And we're going to answer these five questions. We're going to do it together as a class because this is not easy. When Mr. Wu was observing the, uh, what was it, the, uh, the 1W students, uh, they thought this was pretty tricky. I think this is very, very difficult. Okay. So we're going to work on this together. We're going to read this aloud, then we're going to go through these questions. While we're reading, if you discover the answers to these questions, highlight them. So you need a pen or you need a highlighter. And when you find the answers to these questions, just highlight them. Highlight the word or highlight the phrase. Okay, there's no need to highlight everything. We'll read this aloud together. Lots of awesome words for you to learn. All right. So, one. A textile is a kind of fabric or cloth that is generally woven. Harris. There is no sentence that says 
Textiles are classified. So what word gives you a clue as to what is being classified? We're looking for maybe like a synonym or some contextual clue. Yes, Stephanie. Divided, Divided into. Good. Give yourself a tip. So when we're looking at what are classified, and yet there's no classified in the text, we're looking for something similar. What is similar to being classified? Divided into. All right, let's move on. Two. Same thing. How are they classified? What is the method of classification? Eric. You classify them according to the materials which they are made. Okay, so we're they're being divided according to the materials from which relative pronoun they are made. Now. What is the key word in the answer? Again, there's no word classified, but you're looking for how, right? What is the method? So when you're talking about how, when you're talking about method, what word are you looking for then? Natalie? According. Good. So you've got how. You've got method. You've got according. Let me, uh... You see these words, you see a relationship between them. Question one, you see a, uh, well, you see classified. You see what? You see divided into. Synonyms, contextual clues, relationship clues. By the way, number two. Textiles may be divided into several groups according to the materials from which they are made. Split apart that sentence, boys and girls. There's a relative pronoun, which. We've talked about this once, only once. But how do you split apart this sentence? That's one sentence. How do you split apart this sentence here? What are the two sentences? Now be bold. Eric, you're gonna be a superstar today. Give us the two sentences. Textiles may be divided into several groups according to the materials from which they are made. Textiles may be divided into several groups according to the materials. Good. Give me the second sentence. They are made from the materials. Good. Give me something. So I'm just going to illustrate a point that we've been talking about. This might be helpful. That. In order to switch this sentence apart, break this sentence apart, textiles from which um, they are made. You see the relative pronoun here. Where does this belong? In the first sentence or the last sentence? First clause or second clause? Second clause. Just like this, remember? So, the first sentence textiles may be divided into several groups according to the materials. They're made from the materials. Right. That's something that might be useful. This is the second time we've talked about this. So, I see Francesca writing that down. This is good. Let's continue. Three. How many groups and subgroups are there? All right, let's just get an answer first, and then we'll look for the answer. Yes? Stephanie. Okay. So say it again, loud voice. How many subgroups are there? There are two groups. Okay. Uh, three. Three groups? Okay, sure. Yes? Okay, what are the three groups then? How many things are you saying? I'm a little confused. Is it natural fibers and plant and animal sources? Are those two groups? 
Devil. Okay, so let's do that again. Give me number one. What's the first so what's the first group? Kibble. First group. Textiles made from natural fibers. Okay. What's the second group then? That's the second group. Okay. Is there a third group? Okay. Give yourself a tip. So, Stephanie and Kibble think that, boys and girls, even you, Vanessa, I know you're zoned out. But this is very, very important. We have to determine how many groups there are. All right, let's just take a look at the first paragraph, the introduction. Now, those two students over there think there are three groups. Natural fibers. Then plant sources. Then animal sources. Now, Aaron disagrees. What do you think? The first group is textiles made from natural fibers. The second group is textiles made from man-made fibers. And the third group is syntax. Okay, let's talk about this because there are a lot of different words here. Let's just put some groups on the board. Let's just put some things up there. Because honestly, this is where the 1W kids just got confused. And I see it emerging here as well. All right, so we got one group. We got some groups here. Let's just get some names out there. Let's just put some names up on the board. So what kinds of names do you see? What kinds of group names do you see? Yes, Stephanie. Okay, so you see natural fibers. What else do you see? Give yourself a tick. Arnold. Plants and animal sources. Two. Two. Oh, plant sources and animal sources. This might be a new development. What else? Kibble. Yes, give some high 
So these, in fact, are the same thing. They are what kind of word? Contextual clue. Sy synonyms. How do you know they're synonyms? Or, okay, so I can call you a boy or Nevin. Your choice. So we can consider them more or less the same thing. Man-made fibers, natural fibers. Right. We can't consider these the same thing. Alright, so before we actually try to get a definitive answer, number three, how many groups and, and subgroups are there? What exactly were you looking for? You were looking for numbers? But the, I don't see any numbers. I don't see numbers. Counting. What are you counting? Groups. But how do you know it's a group? What exactly are you looking for? There are no numbers. It doesn't say groups here. What exactly are you looking for? Look at what we put on the board. What exactly are we looking for? There are no numbers. Yes, Eric? Right. Okay. So here, when we're looking for how many and what are their names, okay, we're doing three and four. We're actually just looking. We actually answer number four first. We're looking for names. Alright, so we're looking for names. And then number. How many? So in fact, you're actually just looking for names. You're looking for these. And then you're just counting them up. Finally. Oh, four, number two question fours. Okay. Which groups are provided with examples? <laughs> All right, Stephanie. We're looking. Now, of these things here, of these groups that we have, which of these have examples, subgroups? Specifics. Alright, that's what we're looking for in number four. Stephanie? Synthetics or what's the other word we can use? Bi. Okay. So we got one here. Is that it? Is that the only group that has examples? Or subgroups? Is that the only one? Yes? Derek? Natural fibers. Oh, really? Okay. There's a subgroup. There's two subgroups. Oh, Derek. Okay. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Give yourself a thing. Eric's on top of it. Eric says that this does not provide any examples because this is a big group that goes down, right, from, from, but they don't list any specific names. But here, man-made fibers, they do list specific names. What are the names? Yes, Dexter. Rayon. And I. Good, give yourself a So, again, it's a question of semantics. They're saying, yes, Eric. Looks oh. out. This is the British way of spelling, and this is the American way of spelling. Okay? Just like center. Alright, you can spell center with an R-E, I can spell uh, center with an E-R, right? Um, at least I think I can. I'll find out later. Alright, so, 
man-made fibers provide specific names. Natural fibers, no specific names. Okay? So uh, I think that's about it. What examples are given? So three, four, and five are actually related to each other. You're hunting for names. Three, double, four, and five. Any questions? Anything at all? Anything? Okay. What we're going to do then, if you turn the page, is we're going to classify this according to a table. Now, I know you guys are tired. I know this is kind of boring. All right? But um, it's, it's something that we have to do. And you're actually learning something pretty useful. We're going to make, construct a table from these examples. And we're going to fill it out on the, this page over here. Okay. So, what I want you guys to do is, oops. We're going to fill out this table over here, this one. Turn the page again, we have another table. And I'm going to give you time to do this. So what exactly are we talking about here? Classification of what? What are we classifying? Textiles. So textiles belongs in which box? That's the first top box. We're talking about clothing or textiles, more or less the same. And now, what I want you guys to do is take the information that we have already discerned. Take the information from the, these two paragraphs, in fact, and let's see if we can start filling this out. Let's see if we can determine groups here, groups here, and subgroups as well with examples. Let's just see if we can do this. We already have a, a certain idea of how to do this. Can you guys do this, by the way? Yes. Okay. yes. Just take five minutes. Yes. No. Yes. Yeah. Eric brings up a good point. There actually is an article to read. Five, listen. Four, and three. Three, be still. You've been doing a great job so far. Miss Tang's really impressed. Two, be quiet. One. There is an article to read, but what I want you guys to do is just take the two paragraphs that we've read, the introduction and conclusion, and based on this, then we generate something. Then we read the entire article, then we revise. Alright, so let's construct a first, our first table, our first semantic map based only on the first and last paragraphs. Can we do that? Let's just take a few minutes to do so. Okay guys, go ahead. Let's go, you guys have been doing a good job so far. You want to take a look at the first and last paragraphs, what we just have reviewed. And then, let's just fill in some boxes. It doesn't have to look like the table in your, um, on the worksheet. If you think that the chart looks different, then, well, you just do it. Yes. But what, what, what I wanted was that you construct part of it, and then you construct the rest of it. You know, we don't want to do the entire thing at once. 
We do one part, and then we do another part. Maybe it's easier that way, just in chunks. But if you've finished everything, just complete everything.
sometimes the way you see things doesn't make as much sense as the way another person sees things. Right, so we're going to get a few of your suggestions and hopefully we can compile a group map. Yes? But maybe someone has done something different. So we need to consider that as well. Right, so Stephanie will share with us her map. And if you have any changes or alterations, I mean, just let us know. All right. Thank you. Lights, please. Stephanie, come on up. Come up and uh, share with us what you're doing. Oh, by the way, Derek, can you turn on the other air conditioner? I'm like, it's really, really hot up here. Are both air conditioner three, all three on? I'm like, I'm burning up. Oh, good. So when it's colder, maybe you guys will be able to pay more attention too. I know. Well, you, I think you want to sleep because it's, it's hot. That's why. No textures. No more textures. Stephanie's going to share. She's going to share her group, her groups and her subgroups and her examples. If you see something that you have done differently, just raise your hand and stop us. This is not the model answer. There are no model answers. We can make changes if we can agree on them. All right. Oh, hey, wow. Yeah. Move that just a bit. Oh wow, look at that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move it. Are you scared? No. No. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Haha. <laughs> yeah, I think we can move it. Just walk down this side. I love them. I can do it. Okay. Gotta be careful. The plug is not too long. Is there a pop over there? No. Um, is there a pop over there? Is it falling? Can I take it off? And yeah. But we need to ask the MCD. Can I take it off? I know. I, I think we I think the battery's charged. I don't think so. Huh? Okay, can we um, just unplug it then? Yes, can can you help me? Thanks a lot. Can you help me? Can I take it off? Can I take it take this off? Ready. And then can I mean can I take this Five listen. Four. This is charged. Three, be still. Two, be quiet. That's you guys in the back too. One. If, again, you see something different, well, just stop us. We can make changes. Stephanie, introduce the groups and the subgroups and the examples. So we have textiles at the top. Wow. And then two groups. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's 
2B, where we see the uh, classification table. That is right after the introductory and the conclusion, uh, conclusion paragraphs. We have this group over here. Let's take a look at the bottom point three. Excuse me. This is more information on the power and the reasons for having topic sentences and for having, well, a last sentence in paragraphs. So, we're learning about the importance of including certain types of information in introductory paragraphs and in the last paragraph. Now, this information is about the power. What should we do with the first sentence, the topic sentence of each paragraph, and the last sentence as well? That is it. Let's turn the page. Subskill two. Now, what you guys were doing, in order to get these things here, you were looking for names, specific names, but sometimes it's easier to find these names when you have things like, for example, right? contextual clues, remember that? I'm providing you an example, for example, so you know that you're dealing with specific names, but in the introduction, and in the conclusion, there was no for example. So sometimes you just have to look for names. Okay, I think that's about it. Any questions? No. Do you want to do homework? No. Which project? Geography. What do you have to do for your geography project? If you turn the page and you keep going to the next one, after the text, all right, there's another page where you have to start classifying maps.
So, which recycle bin or which waste bin would you put? Uh, which waste bin would you put an aluminum can? Which waste bin? Good. Aaron, five push-ups. Yes. Okay, if you're next. Okay, you guys can go. 